Montreal is a great city for biking. Anywhere you want to go in the city, for the most part, you can get there. Year after year, we see the numbers and we see it being on the street. <laughs> There's just so many people on their bikes and even in the winter. It's pretty fun to feel that you're in a culture that encourages cycling. There's just so many of us uh, in central boroughs that it makes you feel that like this is a new standard. It's the best way to discover Montreal by cycling. Also, when it's a hot day, you have a nice breeze. It's quicker, easier, safer. It makes you feel better. You see people, everybody's happy. Like, what's not to love? In other cities that I've lived in, I've always been an advocate for these things, like pedestrianization and great bike lanes, but actually getting to live it every day, like walk out of my house and just feel safe on the street, it's incredible. The quality of our cycling infrastructure is getting much, much better. And in the last few years, we're finally really understanding what all ages and ability infrastructure should look like. There's almost like a, a thousand kilometers of cycling path and since we took office four years ago, we decided to massively invest into a very strong network. There was no, no bike lane or almost nothing uh, when I was young. And uh, since uh, a couple of years, there's more and more bike lanes, so it's uh, feel more se secure on, on bike paths. One of my kids even takes his bike to school, which is seven kilometers every day. And that wouldn't be possible without the protected bike paths that we have in Montreal. The bicycle culture is strong. And this is what makes Montreal perhaps so special, even in spite of the winter, in spite of the hills. It's like it's natural to just take your bike and go around the city. Yes, we have a lot of cycling infrastructure, but at least in the past, people rode their bikes sort of in spite of our infrastructure, not because of it. So this is actually what Montreal's bike network used to look like. This is an art installation by a friend of mine, Michel Dupoint. This is probably 15 years old or so. Things have gotten significantly better since then but uh, we still have a ways to go. We've created the Rêve, which is almost like highways for bikes. It's protected, it's wide, there's a, a bike box, and there's also bike lights dedicated to, uh, for people using their bikes. Our new system is called the Rêve, which means the Réseau Express Vélo, or Express Bike Network which is a play on words in French, Rêve means uh, dream, so it's like our dream network. Before the Rêve was just a regular street, you had two lanes of cars and then cyclists had to inch their way somewhere between a car and just be careful. Like, I would never send my kids biking throughout the city if the Rêve didn't exist. You know, right away from day one it's been packed with cyclists and it's broken records for all of the counter places. Like it's already setting records for most cyclists in any count location in Montreal. Uh, Saint-Denis recently got a new protected cycle track that were just built in 2020, around 2.2 2 meters. This makes it a very comfortable infrastructure to ride on. They also added midway pedestrian crossings, so they really do a great job at slowing down cars. They also improved the bus stops. The bus stops are much nicer now, easier to access, there's more space for uh, people to wait. It's had a really transformative impact on that section of the city though because this was like, it's, it's a commercial street that had been struggling before and there was so much car traffic that it just wasn't a really pleasant place to walk and now that we have the cycling infrastructure like the cars really actually have to go slow. So people really, they'll, they'll do an extra kilometer just to get on the Rev, just to be safer now. And more Rev, <laughs> more, more street with Rev and uh, less parking spot for cars. <laughs> it's making it a lot easier for people to uh, use bikes in, like a, in a practical fashion. Um, so we've had a lot of like piecemeal development of bike lanes and now the focus is more on connecting everything together to make like a usable network. Okay, everybody, I'm well north of the city in Montreal and I'm along the Rev and get ready for one of the widest bike lanes you have ever seen. Some sections are really very, very generous, like three and a half, four meters wide. So there's space for cyclists to ride side by side and still have space for someone to pass. The Rêve has been planned as a spine of the network. So uh, Saint-Denis was the first big axis on the north-south, mm -hmm. but there are other axes that are being planned.
Clark here with the new protected bike path. Three years ago, this bike path was improved. Uh, used to be with bollards only, uh, and they removed the bollards in the winter. So this road was very wide, but no bicycle infrastructure in the winter. Now they created this median with trees and vegetation. Uh, not only that the path is open year round, it's also a much more pleasant street experience for everyone. Uh, there's a daycare right there, uh, and, and it's nicer for uh, the pedestrians that walks and then the kids. In other cities that I've lived in, even with good bike infrastructure, you kind of have to know the bike map of the city and you, you, you gain that knowledge over time and then eventually you like really know your way around. I think with Montreal, you can just like head out of your house and go as the crow flies in the direction that you want to go and there's going to be a beautiful bike lane for you and you don't need to like access this secret knowledge. This bike lane along uh, Laurier Park used to be parking and they removed the parking and made it a planted protected bike lane. It's super exciting now that it's done. You used to have to come on this other part over here um, which is fine but now it's like luxuriously beautiful of an experience to come through this intersection on a bike. One thing I really like about Montreal is they will implement like a bike lane with flex post and the capital upgrade later is always much higher quality. Whenever a separated bike lane it gets built or for example when it starts being maintained in the winter it kind of changes the kind of users you get to see on those bike lanes. Uh, you get to see older folks, you get to see more families, kids, women, better infrastructure will actually make it more accessible to more people. So right now we're in the middle of Parc Ansic, which is in a Hansik neighborhood. And they, they renovated the park and they added a bike lane. A lot more kids use it now. It connects the borough together. And this is something that was lacking in Montreal. So now we have this, this uh, bike lane and Soriol bike lane above. And they intersect the revs. It's fabulous because it's so safe and it's so useful and practical. So this intersection is next to a major park. It was kind of irregularly shaped. It was a large triangle. So it was a huge sea of asphalt. And so they closed off the section to cars and uh, dead-ended that street over there next to the park uh, and put in this uh, insulation for kids to, to climb on. It's called the Island of Volcanoes, Ilo Volcan. We've had many uh, bi-directional uh, cycling paths in Montreal, so we know that it's not comfortable enough, it's not safe enough, it's not wide enough, because at every intersection it's just too complicated for everyone. This is how we worked before, and this is not how we're going to work by, right now. So we're here in Montreal at the corner of Rachel and Saint-Denis. We can see the difference in generation of bicycle infrastructure. Rachel uh, has a bi-directional bike path that was built in about 1985. Uh, Saint-Denis in 2020. So we're on Bellechasse, uh, which is an east-west street uh, where the city installed uh, bike lanes in either direction, separated. So one, one side of the street's going east, one side of the street's going west. Uh, it's a change from uh, the previous designs in Montreal, which had been bi-directional in one path. So this gives people more space uh, for kids, for commuters, so that way people can pass or ride side by side. You know, you see these cartoons where people say, hey, there shouldn't be two bikes side by side, but that's the purpose of biking, is you're there to talk to people, you're there to socialize. If you're a family, you're going to help your child and push him along. You can't teach a child to bike on a one lane, one behind the other bike path. It's too dangerous. They're wider. So you can see um, women, you can see families using the back lane, which you don't really see in the older ones, which are narrow and double direction. But you can see the city that are really trying to make like an investment. I've always been using my bikes, even when my kids were young. And I have to say I was very sensitive to what is safe for me? And so when I became mayor, I brought those concerns and preoccupation. And the more there is women, not only cycling, but being around the table to make decision, the best it is. So when we have this all age, all uh, abilities approach, it serves everyone. It's really a, a common thing, right? It's not like you're a bike person if you ride a bike here. Everybody rides bikes here, especially in the summertime. And so it really kind of generates that support to do more. What we're seeing with the REP, now that people have gotten to experience it, 
they realize the added value. So now what we need to do is have more of those everywhere. It needs to be really easy within a very short radius to just take some street with separated infrastructure where you know you'll be safe, where you know, okay, I'm gonna ride a few streets and then I'll be on this amazing infrastructure where I'll just have to ride fast and in a really direct way. That's how we're gonna get more people cycling.